Well, good morning. This is Wednesday, right? Oh, I've been traveling so much. It's hard for me to keep track. Pretty sure it's Wednesday morning. I hope so. This is our Wednesday wake up. Um, I'm going to apologize right off the bat. This is going to be like jerky video because I'm holding it in my hand sitting in my truck. So, um, I'm sitting out here because in Waco, Texas this morning, it's hot and it's really muggy. So, sitting in the Florida room of the house that we're in uh, really was not uh, at all possible. <laughs> so, I'm sitting in my truck with the AC running uh, so that I can chat with y'all for a few minutes. I hope that your week has been good, that you have been finding some encouragement and benefits for your health through your study uh, that we have been doing all of the month of June. And uh, if you have already started diving into July's scripture writing, I hope that you're finding the wisdom from Proverbs um, interesting whenever you're able to take a focus and just write them down and think on them um, throughout the day, just a short section, and just think about what all it can tell you. And more than just the initial, um, you know, pass over when you're reading it. So, um, so let's see. Some of the, one of the scriptures that was towards the tail end, uh, it may have been actually the last one um, for June, was Malachi 4, 1 through 2. And we spent all month talking about health. And these last few verses, I included them because even when our physical health and our mental and our emotional health is struggling, I believe that there is an aspect of what God does for us that can move us past the concern for that. And that is the knowledge that ultimately all of the things that we struggle with in this world are going to go away. They're not anything I'm going to have to deal with for all eternity. And that God will take care of it. And um, in Malachi 4, um, he says, For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, and all the arrogant and every evildoer will be chaff, and the day that is coming will set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name... The sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go forth and skip about like calves from the stall. Isn't that cool? I mean, the way that he makes that description, it's the sun of righteousness will rise with healing. It's being in the right relationship with God. It brings healing to us. And ultimately, in this case, he's talking about in the end when he deals with all of the enemies and those who are with him, are going to be lifted up and the, all of the aches and the pains are going to be gone away and we read in Isaiah and really in Jeremiah the prophets telling Israel Israel in both cases are in exile because they've sinned they walked away from God they um, were worshiping idols and it, so God had sent them into um, exile and into slavery in other countries and he has allowed other nations well, all over, allowed these other nations to be in charge and to varying degrees over periods of time during that exile Israel suffered and the biggest suffering they have is they're separated from God and until they cry out to him they didn't have any um, comfort but in both of those verses, God, especially Jeremiah, God tells them, you have done all of this. This is your weakened condition. You're hurting. You have all that. But you still have a hope. Because in the end, God's going to take care of all of that. He's going to fix that. If you, if you stick with him, it's kind of the underlying message. If you stick with God and you give your faith to him, you are obedient. You do what he tells you to do then God's going to take care of all of that suffering. That suffering's going to be nothing when you look back on it. And it always reminds me of Paul in Corinthians where he talks about the thorn in the flesh and um, talks about um, that he's asking for it to go away, but then he's content when God lets him know 
you don't need it to be gone. You can live with it because the view is past that. And then when you look at Hebrews and all of those heroes who lived their faith, they were looking forward to something that was not here, right? They were looking forward to another country, to another place. And because they had their goal focused somewhere else, it kind of put all the things down here into perspective. They still had struggles. They still had that. But ultimately, our spiritual health has a massive impact on everything else. And it is the most vital for us to protect. So that that's why those verses were allowed then at the end. And um, I don't want to uh, skip. I want to go back to Song of Solomon. For any of you who know me personally, <laughs> You're going to know that um, I love the book of Song of Solomon. Um, it, my mother used it um, as a tool to teach me about dating. And she did so in a modest way so that it, you know, you're not, you can't read Song of Solomon and not blush. If you have the ability to blush, you're going to blush when you read Song of Solomon through. But she was able to talk to me about it in a way that wasn't graphic and over, overly sexualized. And as I got older and studied it more on my own, I don't think it's as highly sexualized as so many portray it. Um, it does have that tenor to it because it's speaking of a good, healthy relationship. But it is also a relationship that's being looked forward to. It's not one that's being actively participated in yet because the Shulamite and the Shepherd are not married. Um, but they have an expectation of what to expect from, um, from each other when they um, are going to marry. And in our scripture writing um, in June, uh, one of the days we wrote Song of Solomon 4 and verse 6. Good morning. Oh, good to have you with us. And uh, good to see you all. And I'm crazy times. <laughs> Jumping in. Thank you for being here. Um, so Song of Solomon 4 and verse 6 says, Until the cool of the day, when the shadows flee away, I will go my way to the mountain of myrrh and the hill of frankincense. And in the context, um, that verse falls right between two speeches. One of them is by um, Solomon, and the next one is by the shepherd, who's the beloved. And after Solomon speaks, the Shulamite says, I need to get away. I need to get away and think. And I I like to I like to see that verse as it's encouraging that nature, for one, okay, has the ability to refresh us, and two, that sometimes you need to take time to process information, to think about your choices, not be always right in the thick of whatever's going on, and because she had to go away, and she said, when the shadows until the cool of the day, when the shadows flee away. I will go my way to the mountain of myrrh and the hill of frankincense. And if you understand the power of myrrh and frankincense as trees, as plants growing out of the ground, they have a lot of benefits that they provide just in their aroma and being near them. They um, put off positive energy that is good for us. Um, but then the product that comes from that, the oils and the... Um, uh, incense and all of these things that they take from the those plants have huge um, benefits for all of it for your physical your spiritual your mental and your emotional health um, they're very powerful natural um, uh, products that God has provided and you can get all of that just by being around them and then if you skip down we also re uh, wrote um, Song of Solomon 4 10 through 15 and when we're talking about our health, um, I, I teach these verses to um, the teen girls. And I teach them, this is what the shepherd expected. This is what he saw in the Shulamite and the benefit that she was going to bring to him. And he, he tells her that her love is better than wine. And always their wine would be water with a little... Um, wine in it to make it drinkable but it's better than the effects of even what wine could do if you eventually have you know if you have too much her love her love goes to his head better than wine does and the fragrance of her oils and all kinds of spices he's talking about she smells good but if she's wearing oils and spices all of those spices make him feel good and it's not just on the physical 
um, intimate level. It's just they, she makes him feel good. And all of these things that he mentions are things that we can utilize um, to help with our own health um, concerns. Honey and milk are good for you. And everywhere in scripture you put honey and milk together, it's talking about abundance. It's talking about healthful things. It's talking about an environment that is nurturing. It's not just that she, you know, he'd like to kiss her. He's making the point that the things that she says, he knows are going to be beneficial to him. She builds him up. She is healthy for him. And um, her garments smell good. And in verses 12 through 15, he talks about, he says she's locked up. He doesn't have access to her, but he knows that she is going to be all of these beneficial things. She's a spring of water sealed up. She is uh, shoots as are, are an orchid of pomegranates with choice fruits, henna with nard plants, nard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon with all the trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes along with all the finest spices. He just lists out some very expensive and yet very well known spices and herbs that have tons of healing benefits to them. They've been scientifically tested since then to prove that they have all of these benefits. And this is what he sees her being for him. And that always makes me want to focus on, it's not just about, I don't need to just focus on my own personal health, but I need to see the way that I take care of myself. It is also translated to how I am going to take care of my husband. This Is he benefited and am I a benefit to him? Am I creating a healthful environment for him? And when I don't feel good, is it harder for me to speak kindly when I'm, when I'm tired, when I'm worn out, when I haven't been taking care of myself? Are the words that come from my mouth, are they milk and honey for him? Can he look at me and trust that he is going to get benefit? from me, that I'm going to build him up after his day, and that, that I am a source of healing and inspiration and confidence. And that's what this shepherd was expecting from her. And um, you are a garden spring, a well of fresh water, and streams flowing from Lebanon. She's going to be good for him. Um, and I love verse 16, is her response is, she wants the wind to blow and make all of those scents to, to go back to him. And the, the thing is, is she's like, I want to be that for him. And so when we're talking about health, I put this in here for us to remember that our health, we have to take care of our own, but that when we take care of our own health, it makes us where we are a healthy benefit towards others. We're good for our children. We're good for the family that all around us that we have to take care of. We're good for all of our relationships. And so anything that is good for me is also going to be good for others because it's going to make me in a good place to be a benefit to others. Um, and that's a vital part um, of our health. And then um, when we skip, skip forward to the new scripture writing, um, we know we're jumping into Proverbs. We're staying in Proverbs all of the month of July. It's just wisdom from Proverbs. We're not even going to get halfway through the book. Um, just pulling out scriptures that talk about God's wisdom. But we need to remember as well that um, going back to what I was saying about Ma in Malachi and Jeremiah. That whenever we put our trust in God and we do things God's way. That has a health benefit for us. Obviously, the first benefit is spiritual, right? And that's the one that we need to take care of the most. But it also has physical benefits. And many of these verses that we're writing in Proverbs, God lays out how this is not only good for your spirit, it's good for your physical life that you live this way. And so he covers all of those bases. Um, Proverbs 1, 1 through 7 learning all of these things it helps us to walk in the right way to be prudent to and to stay out of trouble and it's just it it's that overall sense of 
healthiness, right? Being healthy. So, I hope that as you can continue going forward and writing those, as you see wisdom personified, that you are encouraged that God's given you wisdom and tools to access so that you can go about your day every day being better. And this whole walking diligently thing, you can do it. And when you're tired, he's going to give you what you need so that you can be like the calves that go springing through the hills, right? I, that was Malachi just makes me smile um, when I think about that. In Isaiah 30, um, whenever he's going to give us wings like eagles and, and make the old where they're able to run again. It's not that your, your age is, and we talked about this last week, is that sometimes our view of where we are, we grumble and complain because of the loss of things. As we get older, we lose our vitality. We don't have the same energy. We don't have all these things that we had when we were younger. But there's a reason for that. That's not the season we're in anymore. We have the energy for where we are and what we want to do. And the world around us wants to tell us that you should have the energy of a 20-year-old all of your life. And that's just not true. And... <laughs> And we need to be okay with that and accept that this is the season I'm in and how do I use the energy that I have to do what's required of me in the season that I'm in. And God promises to give you what you need to accomplish bringing glory to him and doing well for others, right? So you can do all of that. And I want to encourage you today, um, as I, I'm waking up, that you know, I told you last week we kind of had a whole lot of crazy going on. We left Thursday morning last week, went to Kansas City, um, so drove all day, and then um, we were in Kansas City until Monday morning this week. And Monday morning, we got up at 4 30 in the morning, drove home uh, from Kansas City, and then myself and uh, one of my daughters got back in the car after we were home, I think about an hour. Um, long enough for me to swap out some things in my suitcase and take a shower. And um, then we threw our stuff back into the truck and jumped in the car and drove another six hours. Ended up being more like seven down to Waco, Texas on Monday. And uh, that's where we've been. And we are there today and we drive home this afternoon. But even in the middle of all the chaos, God has given us, when we're tired, we're worn out, we've been given lots of blessings that have built us up. We've been, had the benefit of being with friends, all of the trek up to Kansas City. We spent the weekend being fed by God's Word and being around other brethren who all traveled more miles than we did to go to Kansas City to um, hear the truth about how um, he, the whole weekend was spent um, talking about debunking evolution and talking about all of the proofs of of God and how science actually proves, proves God. And um, there's a member of the church who he he is a scientist and he brought all of the doc these, these documentation and um, taught a lot about dinosaurs and um but he talked about the flood talked about all these things that just built your faith to know that it proves that god's word is true it's not that you need you don't need science to um to prove all that because we have our faith but you've got it and it just bolsters it even more because nature proves god over and over again so we were tired and we're weary and we're not at home, and but we got fed. God's word did that, and being with God's people did that. And then I come down to Texas, and I'm with more Christian friends who I'm with, and we're just spending time enjoying, um, being you know being friends, and we're celebrating one of the girls' birthdays, and they're all having a good time, and we're laughing. And it's refreshing, and it's all because of God's blessings, right? I had the energy to get here. And um, it's really, there's so much to our outlook every day that we kind of look to our circumstances to change how we, to change how we feel. And we expect everybody else to do something to make us feel better or to make us happy um, or to make our day be a good one. When there's so much of that that rests on us, just look to God for that. God will take care of that. But we have to be looking for it. And we have to be open to it. And we got to, got to do that diligent walking stuff. So I really hope that as you are going through your week, that you are finding more 
um, verses and more things that you just look around you that help you and encourage you in being questions about marking. I know we haven't talked about Bible marking in a little while. If you have questions about how to mark um, any of these verses, how to use the Bible marking system, if you have questions about that, you can post them. Are you still there? Okay, my Wi-Fi is struggling. Can't imagine why I'm sitting outside on, in front of the house um, on the curb. Um, but if you're having trouble with the um, Bible marking and would like to know how to make use of that um, for any of the verses that we're doing in the scripture writing, or if you're going through any of the studies that are over in the units here in the Facebook group, just make a comment down below in the video and I will comment on that and share um, how, I, how I would mark that or give you some suggestions for how to do that so that it stands out in your Bible so the next time you open to whatever verse that is, you immediately have a visual impact of what you're going to what you're going to get uh, from that and then you can always dig deeper and kind of take your marking a little deeper so unfortunately when i'm on my phone it doesn't show me I, if you all have made any more comments i haven't seen them and it's not popping them up so i'll have to come back um, after the video posts and go through your go through your comments and uh, respond to them so um once again always my prayer for you as all of us are working together in this group is to help you and to help one another just to be confident that being diligent and walking the hard road that being a wife being a mother being a christian woman that when you do that every day it's hard it's a lot of work but the payoff is you've got this relationship with god and it's what he created you to do and so I hope that you're finding your confidence that you have one calling in this world. The world talks a lot about being called to different jobs, being called to do, you know, have different ideas, called to share this. You have one calling, and that's to the Lord. And if you answer that calling, it takes care of all the others. All the other things, if your umbrella that everything fits under is that you are a Christian woman, and you are living to serve your Lord and to bring glory to Him, all of the decisions that you make, all of the ideas that you have, all of the talents that you bring, if they're in, in submission to God's Word, they're all going to flourish. And they're yours, and they don't have to look like anybody else's. They just have to look like what God wants. And you're going to find that through Scripture, and you can have the confidence of that, and Satan won't have the power to nibble at your confidence in you being the wife, mother, and woman that you are meant to be. So that confidence is found in Scripture, and I hope that um, hope and pray that you are finding that, and that as a group that we can encourage each other to just to trust in that more and more. Okay, well I'm going to sign off since apparently my Wi-Fi is wanting to quit, um, and I hope that this is helpful to you. And I would love, since we finished June and the health scriptures, if you would comment below on this video, that's your assignment for today, <laughs> comment below the video um, if there was a, a scripture about health in the last 31 days that really stood out to you, that helped you maybe have a different perspective about your health or it helped to encourage you to keep on with whatever the goals are that you're working on for your health. If there, was, if there were, was one of those scriptures that helped you with that, share it down in the comments. And let's talk about those because everybody's going to have a different one, right? And you, you pointing out the one that stood out to you will help that be one that stood out to somebody else in another way. It'll help them to take another look at it. And it'll be encouraging to each other. So... I would love it if you would comment that below, and Lord willing, next week we'll be back on regular schedule at 6.30, um, and doing that, just and I'll be home, because I'm not going anywhere for the rest of the month. I still have a busy month, but I'm at home, so, um, and we will talk then, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit next week, too, about the new workbook that I am working on writing. We have The Handmaid that is teaching for uh, young women. And then I've got a new book that we are 
working on writing right now and hoping to release in December if I can get it done. So um, I'll talk to you a little bit more about that next week. Thank you all. Have a lovely rest of your Wednesday and the rest of your week. And Lord willing, we will see you here same time next week.